Cheaper by the Dozen. Now, you might remember Cheaper by the Dozen back in the day. It was made initially in like 1950, and then it was remade with Steve Martin in the early 2000s-ish. It's a movie about a, a, a parents with 12 kids, okay? Well, the new version has a couple of changes in it. Just a couple. Uh, it's, first of all, being lauded by critics. It's got a 38% rating on the tomato meter, but 29% from audiences, so really, really promising. Here's the, uh, the poster for the movie, and, you know, I'm not going to count here on the screen, but what you'll notice, first of all, is they only have 10 kids, which the whole movie is supposed to be about having 12 kids. Uh, you'll notice, uh, I guess if you count the two parents, there's 12, but that's not how the movie's supposed to work, uh, and you'll notice it's not like the original. The original was uh, a mother having 12 babies and uh, over time, and they had a big family. This is a mixed family. It's, you know, some kids from one marriage, some kids from another, some kids are adopted. They're all different. It's the whole, all the different colors of the rainbow. As we used to joke, it's like a Benetton ad. Now Benetton, I think, is probably out of business by now, and their philosophy is the only philosophy that's acceptable. That one turned around on us at one point. Here is uh, the opening credits. I thought you might enjoy this little nugget. Opening credits of uh, Cheaper by the Dozen. Beautiful, nice little house there. Now, first of all, clean up your freaking lawn, okay? You get toys all over your lawn. Pick up the damn toys. None of them look like they're used. They all look brand new, but they're out on the lawn in this high-quality movie. But can we zoom in a little bit on that window? What is that window? There's something yellow in that window. Oh! A Black Lives, Ma a Black Lives Matter sign in the window of Cheaper by the Dozen in the opening credits. Gives you a little preview of what might be coming. Also, um, apparently there's a lot to hate, <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, I, I guess like you kind of go through this movie, you see all of their references to hate speech and everything. I gotta tell you about some of these. This one's funny though too. Uh, if you own a diner that serves breakfast all day, you gotta have right behind you to remind you to resist hate. Because if you don't have a resist hate sign in your diner, you might just, who knows how much you'll hate that bacon. You will hate the bacon, you will hate the eggs, you will hate the English muffins. Uh, resist the hate, Disney uh, says. Now look, at some level, of course, obviously we all understand, you shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't hate. Of course, black lives do very much matter as uh, equally, not more, not less, equally to white lives or Asian lives or any other life, uh, except for babies. Obviously, babies' lives don't matter whatsoever. Uh, but when you talk about uh, people's lives mattering, they all matter. They would not put an all lives matter uh, sign, of course, in the window because that would be, I think, hateful if you follow this. Now, just to give you, I just want to walk you through this because you might have kids and you might be saying, you know, I don't know, shut up, kid watch a movie or something, and they walk over to Disney Plus, and they click down, and they click on uh, Cheaper by the Dozen. Let me give you a little taste. Other than resisting hate and Black Lives Matter signs, here's some of the wonderful plot in the movie. Oh, spoiler alert. Because <laughs> in case you're planning to watch it, you might not know. The dogs are named Bark Obama and Joe Biden. Get it? Bark and Bite? J Bark Obama and Joe Biden. And by the way, uh, Bark Obama is a black Rottweiler and Joe is a light brown Chihuahua. There you go. Um, so at one point, a babysitter is there uh, talking to uh, the kids. Now, remember, this is a movie aimed at young children. Hey, what are you guys playing? Kids are riding their bikes. Drag race. Babysitter. Oh, great. I love RuPaul. First of all, terrible joke. But second of all, you're making drag queen references in the middle of a Disney movie? Really? Yeah, that's where we are. The amount of product placement in this movie will shock even the most capitalist instinct in you. To the point of there are honest orange juice boxes uh, almost everywhere in this movie. It, I, I think the house is made out of them. They actually built the house out of honest orange juice boxes. So that you're going to see a lot of that. Uh, the family moves into a giant house in a swanky neighborhood, and all the kids are running around and hitting each other with pool noodles and screaming. And what you'd expect, family 12, ha, 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 it's really, really funny. The neighborhood security guard arrives to tell them there's a strict noise policy. Now, any of that could have happened in any of the, the original versions of this movie, right? 
It's very typical. The crazy kids. Hey, wait a minute, kids, calm down, calm down. However, Gra- Gabrielle Union, who's the wife uh, in this movie, uh, she is African American. Zach Braff is the husband. He's white, so it's a it's a, it's two, it's a mixed marriage here. Um, Gabrielle Union immediately, of course, implies that the reason she's getting in trouble is because the person, uh, the security guard in the neighborhood, is racist. Um, tells them uh, she's they're racist for um, uh, moving, uh, kind of uh, harassing them as they move in, and then he is shamed to roll away in a Segway. All right, how about the pool scene? This is a great one. They're at the pool. Uh, black wife, white husband. Uh, she uh, she says no, and no one said a word to either of them at this point. She says, "I just feel like we don't belong here." He says, "Oh, of course we belong here." Then she says. You belong here. You belong everywhere. Oh, come on, he replies. She says, no, you come on. Believe it or not, I don't share the same sense of privilege that you do, that I could just go anywhere and automatically belong. This is a mental freaking illness, boys and girls. That's what this is. If you think this way, you're nuts, okay? No one cares about where you are. Nobody. Nobody cares. There's four people in hoods in Charlottesville who care. Nobody else cares. Get it out of your head. It's not real. Nobody cares if you show up at the pool. Nobody. Don't worry about it. We love to have you at the pool. Go swimming. Don't accuse our security guards of harassment if you can help it. But just go swimming. Have some fun. Let's move on with our lives. So she says, oh, the the privilege, the privilege, the privilege. And he says, well, look, I don't feel that way. And she says, Name one time in your life that you didn't belong. His reply, really? Okay, how about that time your father took me to the barber shop in Inglewood and they gave me Jerry Curl? Or how about when your mom, uh, we went to your mom's church and everyone stared at me the entire time? Um, Now, I love that they're coming up with a fictional scene to prove racism and they can't even prove racism in the fictional scene. Uh, There's also this one, which I think is fun. Uh, Gabrielle Union, uh, the African-American wife, warns their children of, co- uh, of color about playing with their toy space ray guns inside the house only. Because if you play outside, it's not safe. You never know when a white police officer could come by and see a little black child with a gun and immediately take him out. Because there's so many stories of space gun directed murder of children in this country. It's an absolute epidemic. Say their names. If you don't remember all the children with space guns who have been killed in their nice swanky uniform by security guards on segways, then you are not paying attention. This is insanity, and it's so far away from the original vision of what Disney was supposed to be.